there's a lot of teams that are young teams up and coming. We talked about the Lions and different teams that finished the season so strong. I'm going with a team that did not finish strong, didn't start strong. I'm going with the L.A. Rams. Mm -hmm. That is a team I think is going to have a very interesting offseason. Sean McVay decided to come back and coach. And Sean McVay, offensive mastermind, a really good football coach. He didn't come back to tank or go through a rebuilding season. McVay's back there. He's retooling his coaching staff. He wants to win. One issue that the Rams have is they don't have a first-round draft pick. Haven't had one mm -hmm. for seven straight drafts. The last one they had, they drafted Jared Goff. Huh. They're also over the cap by 10-plus million. So for the Rams, you have to figure out, all right, we had a tough season, a ton of losses after winning a Super Bowl. We want to get back to the top. What are the moves that we're going to have to make? How are we going to sign free agents and do different things? Well, a lot of the things being floated around rumors right now is a trade of a guy like Jalen Ramsey, a guy that is still extremely good, extremely talented, and one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. The Rams didn't have a great year this season. Jalen Ramsey started slow, but finished the season strong. What are they going to do with him and other guys that are high when it comes to their salaries and their cap space? Are they going to restructure a ton of guys? Are you going to decide to trade some away, have to cut some of those players to add some young talent on their roster? For me, as I look at the Rams, I'm interested to see the worst season after winning a Super Bowl, how they respond this next season. Now that McVay has decided to come back, Raheem Morris is back. Mm. A lot of these coaches and that he's added new ones too. Where do they go from here? F fired a bunch of coaches. Yeah. Like tried to do something, tried to shake something up. My question is, do you bring back Baker Mayfield or not? <laughs> Would you, knowing mm -hmm. that Stafford's health was not 100% like Just that? be Baker to just be the QB2? And yeah, in case of I don't know. Mm -hmm. What's Baker going to demand on the free, free yeah. agent market? We'll see. He was good for them. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, I can't imagine the Rams having two dog seasons in a row with yeah. all those weird injuries and everything. But I'm gonna—I mean, I think it's <coughs> the interesting team's gonna be the Chicago Bears. We know they have the number one overall pick in the draft. Uh, Off-season time, next few months, especially it's GM season. They, they are the stars of this league. They are everywhere. And Ryan Pauls is fascinating because I think he's capable of anything. I think he has sh extreme conviction in his decisions. The whole thing he went through last year with Roquan, where he's like, "Yeah, you're the best player on our team, but like, no, we're just gonna get rid of you. I'm not gonna sign you, right or wrong." Like, I really res uh, respected the conviction. But also the draft and the offseason is a time for history. And let's just get right into this. Mm. The Bears having the number one overall pick is extremely rare. In fact, they haven't had the number one overall pick since 1947 wow. when they drafted Bob Fenimore. You want to see the last number one overall pick for the Bears? There he is. I love that. Isn't that incredible? No face mask, no nothing. Um, Bob Fenimore came out of Oklahoma A&M College, Love it. now known wow. as Oklahoma State. It's an awesome photo. It is a really great photo. Bob Fenimore held the record for career total offense for about 60 years. There he is signing his contract, son. You're going to become a Chicago Bear. You're going to work in a liquor store in the offseason, but That's you're going right. to be a Bear in the season. trains and salt pills to our games <laughs> against the Chicago Cardinals. Um, so that was, that was their, uh, their last one. Their first one is even better. <laughs> we, got, we got to go deeper. 1941, the Bears had their first ever number one overall pick. Same year as Pearl Harbor. Um, <laughs> and George Hallis, who was the owner, the GM, and the coach, mm. drafted a back, that was his position, back, mm. out of Michigan, named Tom Harmon. Yep. Tom Harmon, who never played for the Bears because he decided to go into film. Would you like to look at the heir of the Tom Harmon fortune? Just bring it up. Give me school. Bring Summer it school. up. <laughs> yeah. That is the son of the of the last ever number one overall draft pick from the Chicago Bears, the first ever. Uh, that's Mark Harmon, star of NCIS. You know, NCIS has churned out. 450 episodes yeah. in 20 seasons. I still think of him as a teacher from summer school. Mr. Mr. Shoop. Mr. Shoop. Yeah. Freddie Shoop. Yeah. There he is in the summer school era. Incredible chemistry with Kirstie Alley. UCLA Rutgers. quarterback, if I'm not mistaken. That's exactly right. Yeah. So a great football family. You're going to hear all this leading up to the draft. Somehow the guy from summer school starring Chainsaw and Dave <laughs> will be part of the draft coverage. This is how rare it is. And not only is it that rare for the Bears' number one, Bears number one pick, it was the most absurd of circumstances with the Houston Texans, with Lovey Smith, an ex-Bears coach, going for the win in Week 18, getting the win, and vaulting the Bears into Mark Harmon talking to number one overall pick on the most interesting team. Yes, Jamie. The year that uh, Justin Herbert won the Campbell Award coming out of Oregon, Mark Harmon gave a speech at the right? National Football Foundation like as an honoree, and it was yeah. one of the coolest football speeches ever because he spoke of like his dad and his influence and him going to UCLA, but He's then him man. following his, his dad's footsteps into being an actor. It was really cool. Mark Harmon's got to be involved in the draft somehow. He's 
He's got to yeah. be at the draft. Yeah. He should do that at the draft in yeah. KC. Uh, if anybody wants a great hidden gem in a Mark Harmon movie, watch a movie called Worth Winning. It's him and three leading ladies, and it's just, I love that movie. It's a nuts movie, and he's a single man, and he's just, it's yeah. incredible. Uh, Mark Harmon, the, the kid was in the bathroom stall the entire time and still got the highest grade on I know. the test. Because <laughs> he was dancing as a Chippendale. <laughs> Remember that guy? Yeah, that guy was great. Yeah, love that, that guy. He looked like Jim Carrey, but he yeah, wasn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Great transition. We go from one Hollywood superstar to a team that's looking to get some Hollywood glow going. Uh, the Raiders moved to Vegas a couple years ago, and they went to the playoffs two years ago. They have a new coach now. Like, what are the Raiders doing at quarterback? They let go of the franchise guy nine years with the team, and they don't have a backup plan. There is no, like, well, we're letting go of him because we have him. If you're thinking they're all in on Rodgers, uh, the Packers hold the keys to that. If yeah. you're thinking the Raiders are happy with Stidham, I, I don't think it's going to be just Stidham. I have to think there's somebody else. So, to me, the Las Vegas Raiders, a veteran team up and down the roster mm. with a coach in Josh McDaniels that is now going into year two with a lot of people wondering, like, well, what is the plan? I find the Raiders fascinating in year two for McDaniels and Ziggler. I want to see what they do. I would think they're not going young guy at quarterback. I would think that this team is such a veteran squad. Look at Deuce Gruden. Deuce still Gruden, in the, always. Still in the roster. I love it. They're he's still, still in the company? Still there. Yeah, good for him. Deuce, he's like, I'm my own man. Yeah. I'm going to be doing this. I don't care. Um, tell you, I, I'd like to think they're going to go all in on Rodgers. I would like to think that Devontae Adams is there and say, hey, let's make this push and let's actually get over the top and let's go Rodgers. I don't know if that's a sure thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, A, the Packers are trading. I don't know if the Jets are going to offer more. Like, I, I I can't say that Rodgers is coming for sure to Vegas. So if not Rodgers, then who? Garoppolo, of course, played for McDaniels, and I'm sure they have a great relationship. Is Jimmy Garoppolo an upgrade from Derek Carr? No. I don't, I don't know. So, look, at, in the moment, Derek Carr wasn't working. We're gone. He's gone. He's going to go somewhere else. You got to get better. Yeah. I don't know if there's a guy out there waiting. Can I ask a it question is. about yeah. Derek Carr? So this whole thing where he is not accepting a trade and wouldn't say, yes, I'll extend the contract and everything, do you think if they had handled the end of it differently, he would feel that way? Like the way that they shut him down midseason, if they had let him play out on his own terms and treat him a little differently, might he be a little more magnanimous in the terms of his well, contract? You could go no one or two ways. You could yeah. say they benched him, which happens any team. They're like, and he fled the team, and he quit on the team, uh -huh. and said, I'm not going to be around. We right. don't know the story, but it could also be that the Raiders told him, don't go around. Like, that's the question mm -hmm. of how this thing ended. But to your point, no way he was going to let them get some compensation for him. He, d he might make $10 million less yeah. out of just the fact that I wasn't going to let the Raiders determine my fate. And the mm -hmm. fact of once they made the decision that, hey, we don't want to move forward with him, if he continues to play those last few games and gets injured mm. to the point where now you can't release him, now he's on a roster you don't want him, and you owe him $40 million for that season. Okay. So. And that all sounds very logical, okay. which then leads me to think that it may just have been straight up handled poorly. Like, did mm. they approach him? Did they, did they frame it in the wrong way? Because all of those things make sense. He is an emotional person. He wears his emotion. We see it in press conferences. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. knowing that about him and, like, be, you know, considering if you're in those meeting rooms, like, you, you'd have to think, like, okay, let's handle this the right way, have those conversations the right way. So you kind of think, like, did the Raiders just no, no. botch it? No, no. Um, how sweet would it be for the Bears, the Vikings, and the Lions if Aaron Rodgers was not in that division? It'd probably be good. It'd, probably It'd be, be really good for the Lions. I think the Lions are going to be great next year. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about them. Two first round picks in the 2023 draft. They have a ton of draft capital, uh, cap space, excuse play. me, available in 2023. <laughs> and the way that they played the last six games of the season, now they have a, a most notable free agent that they have to bring back and should bring back is Jamal Williams. He was on the show saying that he wants to return as a running yeah. back. DJ Shark one. is an option on the outside, but there's also a couple wide receivers you can get in the draft. But to have two, two first round picks and to have money to spend implies that you could trade to get more draft picks if you'd like, you could keep, but they have money to spend, go out and get veterans to bring to a team. Now they've lost two assistant coaches over the last week, both to Carolina, Deuce Staley went, as well as uh, Todd Wash, who was a defensive line coach. So I just think they were already good. Yeah. And then to have that much wiggle room financially and that many draft picks, they have six total, I believe, or seven. I keep getting that mixed up with the Eagles, but um, the Lions I think could be Great, and they're going to be really fun to watch. I, all could, I could already sense uh -huh. they're the team this summer. Yeah. I was thinking that same thing. They're the darling. Who's going to take them to win the Super Bowl, though? That's like, that's, that's the extreme. That? That's the extreme. Peter, let me ask you. There are a couple of mock drafts I saw had the Lions taking a, a quarterback 
Really? Yeah, because of the cap hit that yeah, uh, yeah. Goff takes in like next year and the year after. That's interesting. Yeah. And I, that surprised me when I first read it, but then when yeah. I saw the reasoning behind it, I thought That's that was curious. Yeah. Mm. Nothing's uh, off the table. Nothing's When's off When's your mark coming out? Are you doing a mark? We wait till after the combine. All this stuff is nonsense until after we know what's going on. Interesting. Mm. Until Peter can lay his eyes on him. Then he okay. It's not even lay my eyes. Yeah. Let's talk to the general managers. Let's get some actual info. I like the mock drafts, but I think even the guys who do them on our network, Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks, they would tell you combine is when it gets okay. a little mm. fun. Yeah. Right. Uh, 